no, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so not quite as much. I think that would actually be kind of crazy if it did 50 pure damage a second for seven seconds. Uh, but what you can do is... I've tried it once. I won the game, but I don't think it was because of me that we won that game. You go Blightstone level one. And if you've got an, a favorable advantage that you can Radiant either kite around pick. or just trade with more oh, easily, or they have low armor, you just get Nightmare level one, you put it on them, and then you just start right-clicking away with your Blightstone, and you just harass quite effectively. Um, not sure if that's going to be super effective this game, because Earthshaker, even though Bane's quite fast, so is Ten Earthshaker, and remaining. you normally build boots uh, level one on the Shaker. So keen to see how Nine they're looking to go about this. And it kind of will incentivize IG Gaia to go team. away from like a, like a big a farming core, and I, I love the Lycan pick. Bane sucks against Split Push, but uh, Keeper's pretty good against it, actually. But uh, that Enfeeble, if you're playing something like, I don't know, a Lunar or a Medusa, Enfeeble is fantastic team against back. that. So I like the fact that they've gone for a Lycan, something with many different okay. units that you have to deal with. I like the instant answer in the Monkey King, though, for Asteris. This gives you at least some structure, almost, or area of the map that you can Ten just group up on. Remaining. As soon as Monkey drops Dyer that Wukong, you, you call the rest of your team to literally just stand in that area. It's very similar to how Undying likes to play. Like, you drop Tombstone, Radiant and then you all kind of back. rally around that area, and then you group up and make sure Lycan doesn't pick you off one by one. Um, it's... Sure. They have... With, with what IG just banned out, like, did you not feel like the Bloodseeker would have been a better pick in that regard? I feel like it would. Uh, you know, you take away a big portion of what Lycan can do. Seconds, you know, really? a lot of the time this Lycan likes to be on his own. And if you're able to just get a pick off, you Five can seconds, uh, force a TP out. You've got a Storm Spirit. It's very easy to connect and, you know, hopefully take him down. So I would have personally gone for the Bloodseeker there. And then you can go the Monkey King after that. I feel like they were still in a position where there are a lot of position ones that have not been banned out just yet. And uh, I feel like the Bloodseeker would have been a bit of a better value. Uh... We're looking for a offlaner for both teams, I believe. Maybe. Uh, it could be an offlane like, and you never know. True. Uh, JT has the, got quite the hero pool, so we can see him uh, try and flex the Lycan in that regard if they want to. I feel like the Monkey King should be able to beat that lane, though. It should. So, um, but... Dire team back. I mean, what, what do you think they're going to pick into it? Tide's gone. Radiant Bloodseeker would have been great against it. Batrider, okay, Batrider's pretty good at being able to kite around. Not so much with the shapeshift, of course, but outside of that, very effective. Um, I mean, Mars, in my eyes, is still perfectly fine, right? You just toss it up around the Lycan pre-BKB. There's nothing you can do about it. All of his movement Ten speed's kind of useless, remaining. and then you just drop the Wukongs on top of that. Five seconds remaining. They are heavily relying on Earthshaker to start fights, but again, the issue with going in position three, then a melee position three means that Monkey King usually is going to have a better lane matchup, so they could sacrifice some of their initiation for having a stronger lane, which Earthshaker likes to make rotations, though, so I'm trying to think some self-sufficient offlane is that you can, if you give him a start, maybe uh, you, Venno... Although mm, I you, think... don't, you, you don't start team fights either. I'm kind of feeling the lesh a little bit. You know, it's a ranged hero that can somewhat deal with the Monkey King. You talk about that area of control. Once you get the Ag Shard, you can just toss out the Split Earth, and then suddenly you kind of don't want to be standing inside your Wukongs. And you could rally behind it, right? And it gives them an insane amount of tower push with, on top of the Lycan and, and the Lena as well. Team pick. Weaver. Weaver, okay. Something a little different. New hero, Pog Champ. Do you think this is a... I mean, they've got flex going in. Would you rather it be a three or a one, Weaver? Mm, it depends, right? You know, when we were talking about yesterday with the uh, the difference for the... You yeah, may now I, I love the Mars. Uh, when I was talking about with a bounty hunter that changed the Janata, right? And allowing you, allowing you to orb walk, not draw aggro in the lane. It's the same sort of thing with Weaver now. Geminate attack is also... Uh, that sort of ability so you can just be a lot more harassy and uh, not really draw the aggro away from the creeps it is going to be a jt lycan though into a monkey king so i'm keen to see how that lane huh. goes in particular 
I okay. Um, so what's what's the off lane then for Asta? It's gonna be Mars Cuddle, not a double stun to catch the Weaver. It is a. It's not, but it's a lot of spell casting for yeah. Mars. It just even like a spear into Illuminate will take a majority of the Weaver's health pool, and so Ollie's gonna and just chakra magic and do it again. Yeah. Um. Okay, I mean, Monkey and Bane are some incredible laners. I'm pretty sure Aster will win their safe lane. Um, mid should be IG favored with the Lena Storm matchup. And I feel like Aster can win their off lane too. Yeah, it, it, in my eyes, it's two one lanes for Aster, one for uh, IG. So that means maybe they might have um, Kaka make a bit of an earlier rotation, kind of consider that lane lost a little bit. Um, you know, maybe force Lycan to come back, manipulate the lanes a little bit so he's farming under the relative safety of his tower, and then maybe go back to the jungle, take a few of the camps that way, and then just rotate through prior to Lena hitting her, her big timings with the, uh, sorry, the Storm Spirit hitting onto his level 6, so he's not able to escape from an Earthshaker rotation. Alright, well, how, how are we feeling about this one? Do we believe in IG taking the 2 0 or with Ast Eros with a bit of a new look with their draft? Do you feel like they can hit back and, and force a game three? I prefer Ares draft by far, but <laughs> the, uh, the Lycan, if it gets off the chain, does cause me a little bit of a worry, especially for this Bane. Like, Bane's not going to be able to do anything against it. Uh,. Oh, and, and in general, IG have been executing better. Yep. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with like a what do they call it? Uh, it's like a conditional thing. So sure. If Kaka makes the rotation through uh, onto the mid lane and they get seconds, kills onto the Storm Spirit and put him in the absolute dumpster, IG. Otherwise, I think Ares have a pretty good shot. And this is the one thing that China have always done consistently, and we, we see the priority on it at the previous majors as well, where they are all in on making sure these supports rotate mid, like at the first catapult timing, and, and before the level sixes to really get a big advantage. And then you can steamroll if you get that first level six, especially for Alina. That Laguna Blade, you know, potentially being able to then burst through the Storm Spirit, can just transition it into another kill. So, you know, like you were saying, Kaka could put a lot of emphasis with the Earthshaker, even Ollie as well. Like this, you know, Oracle can be no joke with uh, potentially how they can set up the lanes. And in fact, they're going to swap the lanes. So they will still put... Uh, looks, yeah, so JT, he's going to go down in the That's safe lane. It. And they're going to try. Huh. It's not the strongest try lane, though. It's like at level one, it's not. Level two, sure, maybe. But level one, eh, not feeling it quite so much. Well, this really enables JT. And this is what I thought when the Weaver getting picked up. I'm like, are they still going to put it as a one? Because it feels like if you put the Lycan versus the Monkey King lane, like he's going to get heavily punished. And we see Ulu's taking a lot of damage here. He should be fine. But it means that he's not able to farm quite as easily. Dyer's courier has been killed. What are some of the key components with uh, an aggressive trialing? Because we don't see this often anymore. So, what do Invictus Gaming need to do to make sure they can secure a, a trialing victory? I mean, it it makes it sound so simple, but you you just have to get kills. Period. Because otherwise, you're sacrificing so much of this experience between three heroes instead of two. They're actually rotating another hero up top here with Baku coming to join him. And at least for them that, you know, we haven't seen the Bane for a very long time, but this hero, his laning sage is very strong. You can trade at an incredible level with that brain sap. So we'll see maybe if he can, you know, turn the tide here and, and enable this tri lane, but Kaka's already looking to dissolve it. Yep, dissolves the tri lane, rotates mid, the even pump fake and the fish are a little bit there. They had the vision through that uh, high ground ward. A little bit unorthodox, so much less likely to be dewarded. I like it, though, from Aster. Oh, he could even be gone for a career snipe here if he's able to get the uh, yeah. the bottle taken out. It's going to be quite huge. I think he should have vision, though. Yeah. <laughs> Gets it out in time. A little bit antsy there on Kaka. <laughs> he's dragged creeps. He's like, what do I do with them? So how do we feel like 
It feels like bot should be pretty much just the farm fest between the, the Lycan and, and the Mars, right? Yeah, and I think Lycan's totally happy with that. You know, Mars certainly doesn't have the same snowballing capability that a Lycan does. And this is... Is this going to be the first Helm of the Overlord that we're going to be seeing in the Chinese region? Yeah, yeah, we still... At least maybe it was one in the early group stage, the first uh, and second day, but... You know, from, from what we've been casting, we haven't seen any yet so far. Mm. Let's see if that 250 gold makes a difference. I don't think it will. I think it is still just way too strong. Yeah, it's still... Well, you know, we haven't got as um, as many games to, to have witness on with the 7.29 or 7.3 B patch, but yeah, it definitely feels like it's still an item where you know, we saw... I know we were both... We just finished up a cast and we were watching, what, Tundra and, and 33 play with the, with the Lycan Helm. Uh, Helm of the Overlord and we were like what the hell is going on like he is legitimately just he took a tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 and a full set of barracks like <laughs> I was so confused Stupendous. well how much of that is on like being busted how much of that is on their opponents just not responding at all yeah but yeah probably uh it'll be 50 50 on both yeah. Siamese cat a bit of a play here. it's in trouble maybe Ulu can help out the tower Radiant is it going to give him enough protection here the regen oh, armor oh, only oh, still oh, able to find that last blood. ability to Out pick up the kill only finds first blood was my preferred. and that's the timing where you can actually look to get aggressive level two and that's why i was thinking really they're going to go for a tri lane this early on because yeah again oracle level one not super strong earth shaker not really that strong even the weaver right you've got one ability on a long cooldown you don't have the increased level of attacks on uh, Geminate just yet, but now level 2, level 3, it's going to become a whole lot harder for Ulu. He's not going to make an aggressive play in on though. have to be careful. I suppose just keeping in mind that Flyfly, he's got the creep wave pushed quite heavily into him. He can't abandon this to go and help, uh, to go and help Ollie. Kaka's not having too much fun right now. Baku's just giving him the good old treatment with the right clicks. Is I mean, but you forced the storm back to the jungle already. You know, that's the, the downside of this. Whereas uh, Emo, he's just happily pushing in this. And it's another first pick Lena that we've had. Every single time that this hero is available, it will be picked in the Chinese region. Denied. Yeah, they're definitely a region that has an incredible amount of priority on it. You see 20 ah. denies already for Emo. It's nice at least that you can give the lane over to the Coddle, which can just shove it out, get some experience. We've seen what this hero can do with a, a decent amount of farm as well, especially with the you know the force and agonims with this, the itemization from Karka in, in our game one. Be careful here with this courier. Might get denied. Yes, no, Dyer's yes, it will. Has been killed. Being able to pick that one up. And again, you, you just see these supports, they're just grouping around the mid lane. They're making uh, Phoenix have a horrible time. He's just only picking up his boots now. Soul Ring, Dyer's Bottle. This is a jungle I'll build. This is not a laning build. And that is an early fortify. What's going on? Lifefly on the top side. Should be fine. Wonder if they're gonna come down to JT. Oh, okay. He's already a shapeshift. It must have. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mars TP it away from the shapeshift. So it's now on cooldown. Who have they caught out? Baku. What a fissure placement from Karkar. And there's two supports for Invictus Gaming continuing with a sweep across the map. Yep. They uh they placed down a ward. They made sure to body block up the camp as well. So they're just performing amazingly right now. The IG supports. Let's see Phoenix, he's a full level attack. behind Emo, his tower's being pressured in, and you know, you're a bane, you can't really do much to stop it. Baku immediately has to make the rotation through to try and defend against it. But yeah, only level 3, you can't do much of anything. Maybe level 4, they can, so could look to funnel a little bit more experience into the Keeper of the Light, so that you can hit, hit that up and then deal some burst damage onto the likes of Alina. Yeah, but it's just a... Another game where we see Invictus Gaming coming out ahead after the laning stage here, and you know, I was questioning how this Lycan was was going to have a game, but the fact that they went for the aggressive tri lane, oh, zip in Phoenix, 
is on top of emo but again we see the earth shaker with his oh, fissure nice placement nightmare. still the nightmare not enough unfortunately from siamese right cap but we saw top. yesterday fi's earth shaker was just so on point at disrupting the initial jumps and this game nothing different from car car to start well i'm glad i gave that conditional prediction because uh it seems like that's exactly what ig are doing they're just making sure that phoenix does not have a game Bottom lane, Dai, they both used all their ultimates to try and bring down JT, but looks like with that shape shift, he was able to juke himself through the tree line. This is a big rotation from Phoenix. Looks like he will be able to get something out of it, though, at least killing off Oli, but still JT was also able to find the uh, kill on the back line there, getting rid of the Mars. Just with his wolf, I think, ended yep. up getting the... Uh... The last hit, so it's a nice little value coming out here, and all three heroes on IG's side, all three cores, sitting at the top of the net worth. Fly, fly, free farm and top. They've already pushed out the Monkey King from this lane with him trying to attempt the kill on the Lycan, so this will be a very Radiant's early tier one tower getting claimed. Mars is gonna answer the defense here, but he's gonna be careful. I think they need an extra hero to Radiant's kill the Mars, and in fact, that extra is, is down bot in emo. Darko's here on the top side. Look at that. Okay, nice little spear through onto the Weaver. Is he going to be able to cut himself out of these trees, or is he just going to sit there and die? That is a fresh TP coming through. Even Baku also TP'd in as well. Fly, fly. Probably a little bit more of a difficult task to try and kill off the Keeper of the Light there. But yeah, like you said, I mean, Mars, he just TP'd in, so a fresh TP, and he had no way to escape. Fly, fly. Will he walk into this? No. He should still be fine. He's out the creep wave and he's going to back off. He's got the uh, the Ironwood Tree Tango ticking as well, so a good amount of regen for himself. Dyer are scanning. Stupendous. All lose going Battle Fury. Do you feel like this is a bit greedy? I I don't know if he's going to get the time to farm the Battle Fury. I mean, yeah, it, it feels a little bit odd to me. Uh, maybe he's thinking, well, someone's going to need to deal with all these Lycan creeps, but. I mean, the Lycan Creeps might be overrunning you before the time that you're able to get the Battle Fury plus the extra items on top of that that you need to try and deal with them. Kaka? Just out of range of Simon's cat. I wasn't sure if he had vision there. Just going to try and go for the jump. But again, and we're about to hit 10 minutes in. There's Baku. He's got to be careful. They're, they're trying to find him. As soon as the Illuminate used, Kaka... Oh, instantly, no... Emo gets killed off of the river though. Okay, so that was arena dropped into what else did they use there for the kill? Just a little bit of help from the storm. Okay, able to pull it back a little bit here. Phoenix, he's even been rewarded for his good play with a fairy's trinket being dropped in the uh, from the neutral items. So all is not lost. Still, feels like an uphill battle though. This Lycan has basically not had a presence at all on the map, and well, Siamese is going to feel first of that. Bane against any uh, new summon heroes never feels too fun to play into. We just we saw what happened. You want a nightmare to Lycan? Okay, his his summon's going to do the dirty awesome. work for him. Yep, he's got that Centaur Conqueror as well, so you're not even able to TP away against a Lycan, right? He just saves that up to prevent. Uh, any kind of, you know, pissy little support <laughs> plays. See, he's sitting fourth in net worth at the moment. What would you say is uh, a good timing here on the on the helm of the Overload? Overlord, I should say. Oof. It's hard to say. I'm not, I'm not a, a degenerate, so I wouldn't know the, mm. uh, the helm of the Overlord timings. But um, I would say it's going to be heavily influenced by how early you're able to take these towers. And they haven't really put too much emphasis right now on IG of being able to take them down. It's more just focusing in on the Storm Spirit in particular and making sure that he doesn't have a game. But mid tower is kind of low, bot tower, not so much, but top tower also half HP. So I think that's probably where IG are going to look to make their plays next. You know, play around a bit more around mid, open up the jungle, because again, you're playing into a dire lineup that wants to heavily take these stacks. So any way to more easily enable these... Uh, 
these dire jungle excursions, it's going to be really nice. And you can kind of see that Asta Ares, they're predicting that. Look at their Observer Ward vision. It's just this Illuminati, Illuminati triangle around the mid lane. Yeah, we'll see if what they're looking to get out of the Observer Wards will, will help out at keeping this alive. I mean, so far, we're, we've seen the Coddle has kind of been the big reason, at least on the mid and, and top not falling at such an early stage. There's another triple null build that we're seeing from the Keeper of the Light. Really feels like the emphasis on the spell amp that we've seen time after time is, is helping out Radiant's with this lane shoving tower, potential. You know, you're not really going to get that at the moment from, you know, so to say a Bane or you know, a Radiant's Storm as well. Tower, Can't really do it to attack. as high of a successful rate. There we go. Tower's gone. Objective one completed. Just with the, the remnants of the shapeshift, why not? Thankfully for Asteroids fans, JT? they were able to a few. Wait, this is very aggressive farming. He's 100% going off. That was super, super greedy where he was trying to position himself to get that farm. And they should get the Helm Dom creep too. Phoenix going to love this. Plus 100. That's the power of the Illuminati, you know? Yeah. The ward revealing everything. The all-seeing eye. Ulu as well. It's looking all right. So they get their own tower here for Asta. And they themselves have a net worth lead. They're going to look to smoke up on Phoenix. See who they can catch out. Olu's in a pretty good position to pop the smoke, but he doesn't have the vision just yet of the aggressing targets on Asta. Lisa Emo able to get the LSA. Still, Siamese Cat now is in a really good position to stand his ground and use the Fiend's grip as Asta Ares have to look to reposition. It was just a little bit short on mana, not even able to get that Fiend's grip, grip off, of course, with the mana drain component Radiant's as well. So that's going to be really nice against the likes of Alina, but uh, they're forced to back off for now. They're just going to refill uh, Phoenix's mana pool, and then I'm sure they're going to look to make another attempt. How's Ulu going here? Building closer in towards that uh, that Battle Fury. Some uh, some basic stacks going on here for Asta Ares' side. I suppose they're not super worried about anyone on IG from taking it away, although that should change once Fly Fly hits into this Maelstrom. Yeah, we see Fly Fly has been getting a lot of space on the map. No real way to deal with him until Mars is able to pick up a blink. Uh, he is rushing it here. So with the Phase Boot Soul Ring, one in Quelling Blade at the moment with his starting itemization, Blink Dagger at least enabling some way to you know, start these fights. You, you see, again, it's another game where they've got all these kind of circle of deaths with the Ignis, with the Wukongs, the Arena. You know, I guess you're even, yeah, maybe, could you include the Vortex with the Aghanims in there? It's a, Sure. Uh, I mean, you're, you're including the Ignis in it, and it's not even what he's going for. He's like, you know what? I'm going to rush oh, a hex on my position okay. for Keeper of the Light, because why not? Huh. All right. I guess they really feel like they're lacking control for the Weaver. I suppose, uh, but they don't have amazing stuns to be able to counter the Fiend's Grip, right? As long as you take out the Earthshaker first, then you should feel very comfortable in fighting into the uh, the Weaver. Yeah, that, that always still feels like it's the, the big issue here. Oh, fly, fly. fly, fly. It's not where you want to be. Actually. They get the detection, time lapse, not out of range, is. and Siamese Cat. Well, if no one said it can't to the Fiends group, it looks great. As they are able to bring down Fly, fly with a great rotation. And that was like. That was with uh, Mars only 200 gold off of his Blink Dagger. So the fact that they were able to make that rotation without actually having that item in their arsenal, it's a very ballsy move. Pays off for them that Radiant timing. Can you imagine if it scanning. turned around on them and they died and they delayed that timing by a little bit? Every minute counts against yep. the Lycan. And he Radiant's is only... Is under uh, he would have been 500 gold away pre-patch, but now 750 from that Helm of the Overlord. What what, uh, what ancient creeps Oh, Storm Spirit? They've caught him out. Emu with the setup, the cut down with the Laguna Blade. And that was all by JT's vision that he was able to provide with the, the Dark Troll Summoner, Helm Dom. So I... Th I believe they smoked up there to, to get on top of him and well we saw the kill traded previously from fly fly and and now at least getting back on the board here is, is ig and in fact they're going to look to try and take roshan 
God damn, I mean, the Swarm is great for being able to provide all of that minus armor. You've got the, uh, the Howl as well, just stacking it up. So Roshan is armor, minus, minus, minus. He's building up towards, like, only 10 armor, so he'll drop really quickly, especially for a first Rosh at the 15-minute mark. So, you're the one that stole well, they do my kill off Kaka down bot trying to finish his Blink Dagger. He was so close to it. Now he has enough thanks to the Rosh falling, but uh, that was the Wukong's committed... Uh, just to get the kill and Ulu also has Battle Fury finished as well but this feels like this is a very big timing now for the side of Invictus Gaming it is for sure and there's that Helm of the Overlord they've got the Ancient Granite Golem it's the same on both sides so nothing that's going to enable JT to farm anymore and nothing that's going to buff up damage all that much but that 15% HP increase Radiant's is going to be enormous especially for the likes attack. of an Oracle and a Weaver that you need to take down super quick Do you feel like either side has an easier way to execute these fights? Is is the blink on Earthshaker and the like and just chasing these backline supports going to enable IG? Or do we believe in Dyer's kind of hefty team fight that can come through with all their AOE abilities? I mean, in general, Ares' is team fight is easier to execute, right? Because you just lay down these big, gigantic area of effect abilities and you've got the control to enable you to do that. Baku might get caught on the top side here by Emo. In fact, he does. Poor Baku. That's just a, a sad and lonely life sometimes as a coddle support when your only task is really trying to shove out the side lanes. I don't see why they don't go high ground. I mean, Monkey just picked up Battle Fury. That is not a fighting item at all. No. He's going to do his best to do a bit of counter pushing down here on the bottom side. I say that. He only hit the tower once. Maybe just wanting to get that Blightstone proc in onto it. By Phoenix Kaka, instant drop of the Echo Slam, Emo's no. nearby as well for the fall of control. <laughs> as IG lead the first kill into a second kill. Seems balanced. The bonus damage as well on the Helm of the Overlord can't be discounted either. You know, the, what is it, plus, uh, sorry, the Lycan Creep is what I'm talking about. So yeah, plus, plus eight. eight. Oh, that's the but attack speed, plus eight. Oh no, it's damage. Dyer's Never mind. I'm an idiot. Is under attack. It's you you Radiant's wouldn't expect to be plus eighty. For some attack. reason it is. For some reason the golem's chunking for Dyer's middle what two hundred and sixty eight looks like? Yep. Bonkers. And life stealing and having bonus damage AoE from the Vlad's offering component of the uh, Helm of the Overlord. And then you have to take into account the Feral Impulse and then the minus armor coming from the Howl. Like it's just way too much to deal with. Poor Mars the Golem. They just took out that, uh, that ancient black dragon. dragon. Yeah. Lock the camp too. So no, die up. No ancients for you now. Well, that's the Monkey King. A lot of his way to keep up in farm with this Battle Fury. Now they do have very, very good information in the vicinity. Wait, Phoenix? I don't think Fly Fly's got the damage by himself. Not yet, at least. They got the chomp straight on Oracle. That's a big target to be able to bring down. Now with the Fiend Script as well, Radiant, they split away. And this is the Observer Words coming into play. Their vision of the vicinity, recognizing we can pounce now, knowing that Radiant was split. Doing his best there on JT to micro the uh, the Ancient Granite Golem towards the Oracle, just with that little bit of an HP boost, enabling him okay, to Okay, Mars. Bulwark, Bulwark. Damage reduction. Maybe enough here to allow him to get to safety, but with Fly Fly just closing the distance. Now, ooh, ooh, that LSA just shy. So close. I think that's the, the difference in the cast point of the tree dance. I think he would have died before 7.30. That 0.2 seconds. Some of the buffs helping out here slightly for either team as you know, they have halted off the onslaught with this ages but lycan can just get a refresh in the ancients so it was like the uh, thunder hide's not too bad they've got a nightmare in onto the weaver here but oh, again, again. Oh. fissure's just not enough fly fly it's gonna fall Karkar unfortunately was trying to do his best as he can to keep the core alive radiant 
Uh, they've just they got to start grouping up now. You're wasting a lot of the age, and in fact, it's pretty much over in 30 seconds. So they have gotten two tier twos out of it, and, and all in all, I mean, they've grown this net worth lead a, a hell of amount after claiming that first Roshan, but feels like they may have been able to get a little bit more out of it you know, instead of leaking these couple of kills. They're gonna try and clean up the keeper this of the light here. This is super deep. Emo has to pop the BKB as soon as he sees the answer in the Aghanims. What a nightmare! Dodges the Laguna Blade damage. Now Emo's in trouble with the BKB expiring. Aegis, it's already ticked out as well. Karkut's gonna try and copy the savior, but the Echo Slam doesn't clip Phoenix. He's still got the False Promise, but once again, Siamese Cat with the Fiend's Grip on the high ground is enough to lock in Lena. And now JT just has to opt to use the Shape Shift to escape, but Fly Fly still looks to try and take the fight. But Staya, they've got three heroes and in fighting condition at the moment, however, Phoenix is completely out of mana. Maybe they can target him down afterwards. Firefly BKB continuing the chase as Phoenix, now without any help, will fall. Firefly, so much damage coming through from the Weaver towards the tail end. And it, feel like, it felt like Aster Ares were in such a good position that entire time. You know, they got their spells off. They got the lockdown. Bane, great positioning on the high ground. Amazing use of the Nightmare as well. But it's just not enough. You're just getting run over by all these creeps. And now they've got the Ancient Thunderhide as well. So that's where the bonus attack speed's going to be coming from. That combined together with the Feral Impulse, the Minus Armor, the bonus damage from the Helm of the Overlord. These towers are going to be going down pretty damn quick. Is that a bug that I saw just then? The... I know we're against a Weaver, but... Uh, the... Hold it. The Lena was slept, but was still attacking during the Ignis. Did you see that? Yeah, you can attack now through the uh, sleep. Really? Why did they change that? Uh, I don't remember, but I remember someone saying it a while ago before 7.3. So... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't... I'm just a dum-dum then. I think it's a very wonky mechanic that not a lot of people know. It's so Dying awkward, though, scary. with how it works. I, I don't know. Ignis has always been an interesting ability since they brought it back. Well... Making it a deep zip onto an Earthshaker illusion. Blue? They dropped the Ignis again in a choke point. This could be decent for Dyer. JT gonna try and do the dirty work, killing off the supports in the back line, but Siamese Cat delaying the inevitable with the Ghost Scepter. Now that's a beak, it'd be wasted. But JT still looking to pounce. They'll try and force the TP out of the Mars. Unfortunately, they don't have the damage, and honestly, a pretty successful retreat from Ash to Ares, considering all that was used there from the side of Radiant. Man, this poor Bane, man. He just is constantly running around in these team fights, being the focus of about six different units, whether they be heroes or Lycan creeps. And, I mean, he survived for the longest time, able to get the uh, the Fiend's Grip off, probably not onto the best target overall, but they just didn't want the turnaround from the False Promise to be impacting them. Really feels like it's the, the life of a Bane. Life of support, honestly. We've seen that a lot today. The emphasis that IG put on really highlighting how these supports can you know kind of bring them back in fights so often they're the ones that you know can clutch up and provide the the key control or the key survivability is baku <laughs> emo boots for traveling onto the uh onto the wolves there just picks up a freebie on baku in fact jt gets it it's another one of those advantages right it was uh back Remember the day of like Tinker Beastmaster and you used to use your boots yeah. to travel onto the hawk? Yeah, cool some cool filthy stuff. Radiance some filthy, filthy stuff attack. you can do with the uh, with the Tinker hero. Now Anyone they've got boots. the BKB on Phoenix though. So he's uh, got a little Phoenix? Little Constant control is going to come through. Fortune 10 as well just to make sure there's no escape. As they have to drop the Echo, but you're more than happy with getting that kill to now transition into the second Roche. And this is the downside. Like, you, you just can't have someone like a Storm Spirit or a Mars, the heroes that you need to be frontlining, frontlining when you've got the likes of a Keeper of the Light, right? It's not like some of these heroes that is amazing just with its 
you know, toolkit, right? A lion is always going to be able to provide some great stuns with, like, just a blink dagger. But this uh, Keeper of the Light was sitting above the Mars until a couple of seconds ago on the net worth charts, and the Will-O-Wisp is great, but you're just not able to, like, frontline in team fights and survive against all of this damage that IG has with it. And we just saw Flyfly Fly also pick up the Arcanum shot on the Weaver. I know you were a big fan of this one through the first iteration when Weaver got that Arcanum shot. Oh, yeah. Especially with a Maelstrom, right? Anything that's able to proc onto multiple units, it just procs off of absolutely everything. So I love it. You're just going to get so much lightning going around in all these team fights. Uh, maybe a bit less than if you were against like a lot of units. Like if, if this was a Weaver into a Lycan lineup, it would be a real static storm, but still pretty damn powerful. Radiant oh, what a scan. I don't know how they predicted them to be there. Siamese Cat and Ulu. Are they going to start the fight? Ulu just dropping down the ultimate along with the Fiend's Crypt. There's nowhere to keep Karkar alive. Orchid a little bit too late. A BKB on a Ghost Scepter to enable the TP out and they will both make it. So a, a quick freebie on Karkar and just getting out into the night. And it feels like that's the way that they're gonna, constantly going to be playing. You know, Siamese Cat, he just needs to stick on the back of Phoenix or on the back of Ulu. And, uh, you know, if he doesn't, it feels like they're just going to be susceptible to these sorts of ganks again and again and again, because it's just the roaming IG squad right now. Fly, fly. They're going for it again. Dyer's vision has been really on point this game. Like, I would not be surprised if we see a pretty early gem pick. Oh, you got a weaver, so it's, it's always like, do we really want a gem? We give it away, then that's a bit of a yikes. Yeah. I mean, that ward got instantly dewarded because... But it did its job, right? Like, it protected yeah. the entire team from being wiped. Oh, you Mars? Had... <laughs> Dude, again. This Lena TP in. And now they've got the Ancient Black Dragon as well. So this could be... This could be trouble. Meanwhile, mid lane. Flyfly, Fly, is he going to opt to dive the Coddle? It's very, very deep. Here I am. Especially now that he's got that level 20 Geminate attack damage. So... Pretty balanced, uh, Gaben. Just being attack. able to provide an extra 145 damage when you use the Geminate attack. Bottom tower is under attack. Structures are you see Ulu's trying to do whatever Radiant's he can to keep attack. some of the lanes shoved out and, and get a little bit of his own farm, but he's not really keeping up in the net worth, and, and this is with the Battle Fury as well, Dyer's so you know, a bit unfortunate here for the Monkey fall. King as... Lena's trying to catch him Ooh, so close. Right. 15,000 net worth lead as Invictus Gaming still have a, another minute 50 Dyer's left on the ages. See how much more they can get out of it, however, as going up high gun is a, a really, really difficult prospect into how Aster Ares can you know, formulate a defense. Is there. Look at a jump straight on top of Fly Fly here. Karka, can he disrupt this with a fissure? Maybe in the nick of time, and you know, it's not even required there as Fly Fly just gets the ultimate off. It wasn't any ultimates, though. No ultimates were used. I was thinking, man, that's a pretty heavy commitment onto the Aegis, but... Yeah, he's still going to be able to survive with uh, a minute 20 left on the ages. It, it feels kind of okay. And again, that Willow is such a low cooldown that you're not really caring all that much. It really feels like, I mean, as areas are going to continue to, to lose out in regards to the net worth, but they are delaying this game to a stage where maybe their team fight can start to be the X factor on how they bring this back. Is Mars well, oh, again? Yeah almost the play with the boots of travel on this black dragon again but yeah. now yeah second ages is going to tick out in 40 seconds and then maybe we might see asteri smoke outside the base it's still a 16k lead though right <laughs> let's be realistic about everything the the good thing for mine is how phoenix has been able to avoid a lot of these ganks for a while like he picked up that bkb four minutes ago and he hasn't need to use it just yet so the first time that he does is uh, going to be pretty impactful still. Karkar's setting up top, though. It is just Baku's Phoenix that's going to shove it out. Dai will see the rest of Radiant swing on over towards the area, so I recognize that they can't really stick by Karkar. He's not 
Need the rest of the team, Karka. They might just. Oh, uh, are they going to jump Karka? Down. They saw over on us under the ward. They're a little bit worried at the moment about how fast they can close to help out the Earthshaker if they jump him. They'll just attempt the Nightmare into the TPR. Nice play from Weaver. He's able to cancel that one. So they will be able to kill off Siamese Cap. And meanwhile, actually, in the river, Ulu. I believe there was a solar kill on Emo. He wasn't able to pick up the DD. And JT's ripping him apart. The Wolf should be able to bring down Ulu with ease thanks to the rune. <laughs> Oh man, that double damage just changing the game entirely. He had three Jingu stacks onto him. He would have felt much more confident of being able to turn and man fight if he had that available for himself. And then of course, that would have just resulted in more lifesteal, huge snowball effect. Still were able to get the Lena though, but I think the fact that you don't have the Monkey King or at least are able to force the buyback means that this is a pretty confident push up onto the high ground. <sighs> that was a very close Orchid. Very close orchid from Fly Fly. They can still continue the push. Backdoor protection will be up very shortly, but oh, actually, never mind. They've still got the catapult. Look very how fast balanced. they can push. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. That 250 gold. That that was really the game changer. It's definitely not overpowered oh. anymore. Fly Fly Fly. Big item speed doesn't find the connection. Now he can just target down Siamese Cat, although. Bane still will end up falling. Now the zip on the back line, Phoenix trying to deal with the Oracle at the moment, but Oli, he's still able to survive through the initial use of the mana from Phoenix. Now he's got to be careful. Fiends grew out, but once again, the Orchid preventing the long duration of the control to lock in Emo, but maybe with, no, actually the Monkey King, they destroyed the tree with the arena instantly pouncing. A die back for Ulu, and now without your monkey. Oh, what a disaster of a way to end the game. Unfortunate for them that the arena can't destroy the tree. Not a way you want to go out here. Yeah, very unfortunate. I mean, they committed so heavily to that team fight. They used a buyback on the position one Monkey King when he had about six seconds left on his death timer as well. That's how desperate they were to try and make a turnaround play with this. And for it to all end in that, just uh, by your own teammate's hand, it's it feels bad for sure. But... Uh, you have to say it was IG feeling pretty confident there. I, I feel like the supports, especially in the first 10 minutes, executed the game plan to perfection. Just completely nullified any kind of game that Phoenix had. And I just, IG uh, looking, I mean, coming into it, it's, you kind of expecting uh, this team, you know, TI representatives against Ash the Aries. They put up quite the fight, but in the end, unfortunately, we're still seeing that the Helm of the Overlord is something that's incredibly strong. It wasn't even that in the end. It just felt like how IG were able to execute some of these fights on on a bit of a, a level that Ash the Aries weren't able to do. So I, I really think, though, it, it can come down to the fact that how the lanes went. I was really worried about the like and potentially matching into the Monkey King, but the fact that IG go this aggressive try lane, it gives JT a game. And in fact, he went eight to an eight. Fly Fly had a great time in that try lane. Emo won mid. Like we were saying, this was potentially going to be a two to one lane victory in favor of Ash to Ares. And in fact, that just was not the case here again in the second game. And well, that's yeah. just our first series done, but we have an incredible second series. Team Asta, the team on top at the moment, taking on Elephant. What a battle that is. Two TI representatives. The big brother as yeah. well. They might have just seen little brother Asta Ares go down and think, well, you know, we got to flex our muscle a little bit here. So we'll see how that is. Who knows how long we're going to wait because uh, over the past couple of days, it's been you know, up in the air somewhat. The lobby's up right now, but no one joined it just yet. But make sure you stick around. I mean, Aries, you always got some great tunes to be able to play in the downtime. And yes. you know, we'll be vibing and chatting in chat, as we always do. We'll be vibing. We'll be cat jamming. We'll be back. Second series of the night. It's a cracker. Elephant up against Team Master.